It's uh, good to have all of you here. Uh, most of this evening is music. We'll break in the middle for a, a couple of uh, some, th uh, um, some people speaking about the environment and some other things. So it's good to have you here and I'll turn it over to um, Lonesome Burton Friends. One, one. Hey, good evening. Uh, today's Earth Day. Um, I myself kind of run away from causes, so I'm a bit of a hypocrite. But when I was asked to do this, I said, wow, this is a great cause to make. Thank you for attending tonight's sing-along. Uh, most people think uh, Elvis is still alive and Pete Seeger is a myth. But I myself, I've met him twice. I had the pleasure of meeting Pete Seeger at the Hudson River Sloot Restoration. Uh, he was standing uh, to the left of me with some women, very attractive, and I was to the right. And for some reason I couldn't get him to turn to the right. I, it was difficult. Another time I was on Capitol Hill about 10 years ago and I nearly knocked him down on a street corner. And I said, you're fracking Pete Seeger! And he said, mm -hmm. You know, so I, I know he existed, he was around. Tonight's my great pleasure to introduce some dear friends of mine here for Earth Day playing for y'all. Mr. Chris Clark, the anonymous bass player of St. Augustine, on bass, stand up bass, old K, 57 bass. Mr. Tommy Bledsoe, on banjo, guitar, and some strange Venezuelan or Mexican instrument later on. Thank you. And my great dear friend, Lonson Burt on guitar. When I was asked to do this, I, I felt that I felt a need to uh, to write something about the man so you got some sort of idea about Pete Seeger. He was born May 13th, 1919. He died just recently at the age of 94. He was driven to causes in the early 40s, late 30s, in the, in the, at the crest of the end of the Depression, he rode boxcars with Woody Guthrie and played in migrant war camps and, and union halls. Uh, he he co-founded a group called the Almanacs, which consisted of Lead Belly and Cisco Houston and, and Woody Guthrie and Brown, Sonny and Brownie McGee. And they all played sort of, they didn't care what they wore, it was very informal and they played peace songs as a matter of fact, because they were, they were, they were for, for, solid, for not going into World War II. They did isolationism, it was called. And they sang peace songs. But of course, we went into the war, we all know that. And 10 years later, Pete co-founded the Weavers. They got their name from a Scottish ballad. The Weavers were the first folk group that popularized folk music. They had a big hit in the 50s, and they became national. After the blacklist ended their careers and so many others, Pete, in the 60s, took to the environment. And in 66, he co-founded the Hudson River Slough Clearwater. The Clearwater is a 106-foot long sailboat that was built, it took three years to build, and they used it to sail up and down the Hudson River so that people would again look at the river as something beautiful because for decades it had been sort of a dumping ground for industrial growth. So to this day, the, the Clearwater still sails and they have educational programs funded through colleges like SUNY Paltz and, and other colleges. Pete um, once said, quote, yours for peace, freedom, jobs for all, lots of good picking and singing, Instruments that stay in tune, and people likewise. <laughs> Pete believed a song can hurtle over all barriers and walls and bring people together, regardless of race, religion, or even politics. He said, one time, think globally, act locally. Today, you can see that on a bumper sticker as the world goes racing by. 
He also said, and I love this one, he said, he was a believer in small things. He said, the world, I believe, is going to be saved by millions of small things. Too many things can go wrong when things get big. Tonight, we would like to share some of his songs with you. Throughout his life, he tried to bring together people through song, touching their hearts. And his life leaves a legacy of song. We want you all to sing along. Even if you can't, please try, because it doesn't make any sense for us to sing these songs by ourselves. We want you to throw in a harmony or two. Let us celebrate Pete Seeger's life for all time, this one time. It's a small thing, but we think that he would approve. Thank you so much, and now let the show be. I was a young man, never been kissed. I got to thinking it over how much I missed. Got me a girl and I kissed her and then, and then, oh Lord, if I ever kissed her again, because she had kisses sweeter than wine. She had come on, kisses sweeter than wine. Kisses Sweeter Than Wine. It was a hit for the Weavers back in 1950, 51. It's before my time, actually. 53 for me. Our next selection is the Gordon Song, appropriate for Earth Day. It was written by David Mallet in 1975, record recorded by Pete and Arlo Guthrie on the LP Precious Friends, the Gordon Song. Inch 
inch by inch, row by row. Gonna make this garden grow. Gonna mulch it deep and low. Gonna make it fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row. Please bless these seeds I sow. Please keep them safe below till the rain comes tumbling down. Straight and long, season them with prayer and song. Mother Earth will keep you strong if you give her love and care. Oh, go watch him from a tree, has his hungry eyes on me. In my garden, I'm as free as that feathered thief up there. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. Gonna mulch it deep and low, gonna make it fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, please bless these seeds I sow. Please keep them safe below till the rain comes tumbling down. Please keep them safe below till the rain comes tumbling down. Thank you so much. Thank you, the Gordon song. Hey, wow, we. Um, Third selection for tonight is the Hammer Song, quite often called If I Had a Hammer. It was co-written in 1949 by Lee Hayes and the Weavers. Um, I just want to know, these pants make, no, never mind. Um, recorded and released by the Weavers in 1950. In 1962, it was a hit, major hit, number 11 for Peter, Paul, and Mary. And in 63, it went to number one with Trini Lopez. The Hammer Song was pretty much a, a, a written for union workers and for better rights for people, women's rights, and etc. 1949, The Hammer Song. Thank you. This is a big sing-along tune here. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. written by Pete Seeger, Words and Music. The Smothers Brothers ended Seeger's national blacklisting by broadcasting him singing Waist Deep in the Big Muddy on their CBS variety show on February 25th, 1968. It broke his, his blacklist. He wasn't 
on television or radio for 17 years. This was the first time in 17 years. Waist deep in the big muddy. Back in 1942, I was a member of a big platoon. We were on maneuvers in Louisiana one night by the light of the moon. The captain told us to board a river. That's how it all began. We were knees deep in the big money and the big fool says Bouchon. Sergeant said, sir, are you sure this is the best way back to the base? Sergeant, go along. I forded this river about a mile above this place. It'll be a little slog if you keep on slogging. We'll soon be on dry ground. We were waist deep in the big muddy and the big fools has push on. Sergeant said, sir, with all this equipment, no man will be able to swim. Sergeant says, don't be a no, a nervous Nelly captain said to him. All we need is a little determination, but follow me, I'll lead on. There we were, next deep in the big muddy, and the big fool says, push on. All at once, the moon clouded over, and we heard a gurgling cry. A few seconds later, the captain's helmet was all that floated by. Sergeant said, turn around, men. I'm in charge from now on. And we just made it out of the big muddy with the captain dead and gone. We stripped and dived and found his body stuck in the old quicksand. I guess he didn't know that the water was deeper than the place he wants to go in. Another stream had joined the big muddy about a half an hour where we gone. We were lucky to be safe from the big muddy when the big fool says push on. to point anymore i'll leave that for yourself baby you're still walking you're still talking and you'd like to keep your help but every time i read the paper that old feeling comes on here we are waist deep in the big muddy and the big fool says push on waist deep in the big muddy and the big fool says push on waist deep and the big body and the big fool says push on waist deep neck deep so deep and a tall man will be over his head there waist deep and the big body and the big fool says push on waist deep and the big body and the big fool says push on thank you so much thank you thank you wow we just love playing for y'all. We, uh, we're going to play another selection. I, I did grow up in New Jersey. I heard somebody say that. And, and there's a lot of garbage in New Jersey, I have to tell you. I mean, like, uh, like everywhere. It, it's, it like affected me as a child, I have to say. So this song was written by a man named Bill Steele. And the fourth verse was penned by Pete Seeger and Mike Agroff in 1977, which goes to show you that Pete was still out there writing songs, you know, trying to trying to get the message out. I would never write a song as, as simple as garbage. It's pretty easy to understand and self-explanatory, especially if you're from Jersey. Now the refrain to this is three garbages. Yeah, you have to mutter along with us, please. It's garbage, garbage, garbage is the refrain. And I'm sure you've all had it. Mr. Thompson calls a waiter, orders steak and baked potato, and he needs a bone and gristle, and he never eats a skin. Our bus boy comes and takes it, where the cough contaminates it, and he puts it in a can with coffee grounds and sardine tins, and the truck comes by on Friday, and hauls it all away, and a thousand trucks just like it are converting on the bay with garbage, 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 garbage. Garbage, 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 garbage. Filling up the 
see with garbage. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Garbage! Garbage, garbage, garbage. What will we do when there's no place to put all the garbage? Garbage, garbage, garbage. There's some Thomas and starts his Cadillac, winds it down the freeway track, leaving friends and neighbors in a hydrocarbon haze. He joined the lots of other cars, all sending gases to the stars. There to form a seating around it. Days, and the sun beats down upon it with its ultraviolet tongue and turns it into the smog and then it winds up in our lungs. It's garbage, 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 filling up the air with garbage, 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 garbage. What will we do when there's nothing left to breathe but garbage, 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 garbage? Kids all do the homework with a TV in one ear. Bob Batman for the thousandth time helped sixty dollars and sucker fun. The kids all learn the date of the ride with Paul Revere. Another piece in the paper tonight about the president's birth. They make a place of birth and it gets done in time to watch the greatest race on earth. That's garbage, 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 garbage. We're filling up our minds with garbage, 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 garbage. garbage. What will we do when there's nothing left to think about, nothing left to see, and nothing left to breathe, and nothing left to be but garbage, 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 garbage. Here's Pete's verse. In Mr. Thompson's factory, they're making plastic Christmas trees, complete with silver tinsel and a genie's stand. The plastic's mixed in giant mats from some conglomeration that's been cracked from deep within the earth. Split mine from the land. And if you question anything, they say, what well, don't you see? It's absolutely vital for our whole economy. That's garbage, 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 garbage. garbage. Their stocks and their bonds are all garbage. Garbage, 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 garbage. What will we do when the system goes to smash? There's no value to their cash. There's no money to be made. There's no world to be repaid. Their kids were reading history books about the financiers and other crooks and financiers and citizens and looks of other neighboring. The history is cuts for me by all many other kinds of garbage. Garbage, 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 garbage. Take a little break uh, right now, and Reverend Ted's going to have a few words with you. Thank you all for being here. It's great to see you. But before we do, I'd like to introduce this gentleman here. He's been uh, doing all the talking here. You might know him. You've probably maybe seen him over at the farmers market playing music, or maybe you've had a haircut lately. This is Mr. Joe Rocco. <laughs> there I was getting a haircut. And I was talking to Joe three or four months ago, and I said, oh, we're going to do this thing about Pete Seeger. And he says, I know Pete Seeger. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> and then he told me about 30 minutes worth of Pete Seeger. And I said, you're in. <laughs> Audition over. Lonesome Burton friends. We've had quite a crowd gather since I last spoke. Um, I'm Ted Voorhees. I'm the pastor here at St. Cyprian's. 